On the Tuesday of Holy Week, Jesus and his disciples are traveling from Bethany on to the Mount of Olives and then on to Jerusalem. On the way, the book of Mark states that Jesus became hungry and he saw a fig tree off in the distance. Mark notes that it wasn't the time of year for figs, but this tree had leaves. Externally, the fig tree was advertising, if you will, that there would be fruit. Those leaves meant that there would be fruit. But as Jesus looked closer, he noticed there was no fruit on it, and he cursed the tree, saying, May no fruit ever come from you again. We'll pick up in Mark chapter 11, starting with verse 15. And then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were buying and selling in the temple, and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he would not permit anyone to carry merchandise through the temple. And he began to teach and to say to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But have you made it into a den of robbers? The chief priests and the scribes heard this and began seeking how to destroy him, for they were afraid of him, for the whole crowd was astonished at his teachings. There are some striking similarities between the fig tree and Jesus' visit to the temple. Uh, when Jesus got into the temple, he noticed a lot of activity, a lot of people, a lot of things going on in the temple court. But when Jesus looked closer, he noticed that the temple wasn't being used for the right reason. It was being used for commerce. Jesus was surrounded by scribes, Pharisees, people from, if you look from the outside, it looked like they had it all together. They appear to be living lives in service to God. They say the right things. They look the right way. But they have a lot of trouble living up to the part. They're a lot like the fig tree. They're advertised leaves. They advertise fruit. But it's really just an external show. When it came time to living, they had a hard time living up to what they professed. They professed, professed to know and love God but they really love themselves. The barren and withered fig tree and the commerce-oriented temple, they really symbolized each other. Neither were fulfilling their purpose. The fig tree showed a lot, of, a lot of life, but no real fruit. And despite all the activity going on in the temple courts, worship and prayer weren't the primary focus. Mark uses the fig tree to illustrate the curse being put on a hypocritical, unfruitful system of religion that had taken root. Jesus came looking for fruit of righteousness, but he found nothing but leaves. Jesus had come to give God's people one more chance to turn their hearts back to him, but unfortunately they rejected him. So Jesus wasn't just denouncing a nation. He was also denouncing a way of life. He was denouncing unfruitful Christians, people who profess to be Christians but have no evidence of a relationship with God. The lesson of the fig tree is that we should be about bearing spiritual fruit, not just giving appearance of spirituality. The fruit of the Spirit is described in Galatians 5 as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus says in John chapter 15, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. It's not enough to just be religious. Uh, we're called to have a relationship with God. Followers of Christ are to live lives of faith, evidenced by godly living, and it's all to God's glory. Have a blessed week.